recording, so go right ahead. <laughs> yeah. Books. So good. There's the typical. I wore the non-technical hat in the uh, founding team. So all the great sales books um, out there I've read. Um, good to great is, is one of the uh, better ones I've read. But I actually found that my business was online and it is now. And I felt like a lot of the books on the shelves would give you good lessons. But the type of content I've read with top bloggers and, and real live content by people in the industry. And that's where 90% of the reading I've done over the last uh, six years has been. Uh, I'm Nick Friedman, and uh, shameless plug, I wrote a book called Effortless Entrepreneur. <laughs> First of all, I'm like, oh, great millions. Uh, but no, I'm just kidding. I did write that. But the books that made the biggest impact for me were The E-Myth Revisited by Michael Gerber. <coughs> it's a must-read uh, by any uh, starting entrepreneur. It's all about working on your business, not in your business. Uh, the Purple Cow by Seth Godin. It's a marketing book about creating a remarkable brand and a remarkable experience. And Rich Dad Poor Dad, if, if you haven't read that, it's a good starting point to kind of re-shift your paradigm and way of thinking to kind of get outside the, the stifling traditional path that uh, society typically puts forward for you. Actually, I like all those a lot. But on a totally different note, um, for me, one of the most inspirational books was not very inspirational at all, but it was Getting Things Done. And sometimes I think when you're an entrepreneur, you have so much to do, and I think it really helped me think about like my priorities and what I wanted to get done, especially when you're starting off by yourself. Um, and then kind of on the other end of the spectrum, once you do build a team and a big company, um, a bunch of management books I found really helpful. Um, and now I can't remember any of them. Uh, was Susan something? Whatever, look at management books. Because I think at some point, like, you know, all of a sudden I have a team of 75 people, and I'm just like, I managed like two people my whole entire life. So finding good management books and like asking mentors about what's worked for them. And when I remember it, I'll tell you. Um, there's a book that I've read recently. I can't remember the author's name, but it's called Time Warrior. Um, and it really just focuses on managing your time well and just dealing with the feeling of overwhelm that's so common when you're an entrepreneur. So I really enjoyed that book. And then there's also something called Smart Briefs. Um, those are emails that you can get daily. They have smart briefs for entrepreneurs, smart briefs on leadership and small business. And those are just like daily reads that I enjoy. It's like a bunch of different articles from different places. And I find them pretty helpful too. Uh, my name is Andrew Saladino. I founded a few companies. My first one is called uh, Kitchen Cabinet Kings. So unlike some of the other people who kind of have an idea or a product, um, my company basically is e-commerce store. So we're in the space of, um, I'm really big on marketing. My background is computer science and marketing. So we developed kind of a platform that allowed customers to shop kitchen cabinets, online bathroom cabinets, and really change how easy it was. Um, so one book that I really like with the background, um, with the marketing, is Words That Sell. It's a really simple book. All it is is a bunch of words that people use every day for buy. And it'll give you like five or 10 synonyms just to say buy that kind of get a response. And we leverage those in social media and blog posts throughout. And we've really seen an increase just from changing the terminology of buy now to other words that really just show a high return on investment. And then a plug from uh, YC founder Scott Gerber, uh, never get a real job. Um, kind of with there, it's really, I'm one of the younger people, I think, on the panel here, and my company is founded completely without any backing financially, and it's just a lot of hard work. As all the other panel members say, we don't really sleep that much, so instead of really sleeping, I work on weekends, I work, etc. And you really want to, you have to decide if you want to have more of a social life, or if you're really dedicated to being an entrepreneur and making this work. It's a lot of work, it's not easy. We all didn't get here just by accident. It's just a lot on our parts. So if this is something you really wanna do, don't give up. You're going to fail. You're gonna learn a lot along the way. And one of the most important things that I learned really quickly is that you don't know everything. There's gonna be times when you're gonna need help and you're gonna need to ask for it. That's why you seek mentors for things that you don't understand. So just kind of from there, um, just kind of go ahead and just don't be scared and you really have nothing to lose. Except for Alexis, his life is uneasy. <laughs> <laughs> if you're 6'4". Yeah. <laughs> um, no, 
I, I think uh, kind of looking for inspiration is always important. And one of the books that I really enjoyed was The Intelligent Entrepreneur. Um, really kind of dug into the details of the ups and downs and the roller coaster rides of uh, a few different stories. Um, and it was just really interesting. You know, it's like you wake up and it's just, you know, you're, you're at the high, at the peak, and then, you know, an hour later you're down here and then up and down and kind of goes through all the ins and outs and, and really gives you uh, an in-depth look at, you know, what it takes and what kind of sacrifices uh, you have to really make uh, before you, know, you get to a successful point. And I think success is really in the eye of the beholder. So uh, to them, you know, they were pretty determined in, in you know, their stories and it's really just interesting to hear. So. Uh, the best book that I've read in the last six years is called Integrity. The subtitle is The Courage to Meet the Demands of Reality, and it's by a guy named Dr. Henry Cloud. Um, and the premise is essentially that in order for you to be successful in anything you do, whether it's business or something else, you need to have the courage to deal with the demands of reality. And you can only do that when you're willing to be completely truthful about who you are and what you really want, and then get an alignment around that. And uh, for me, the biggest lesson that I've learned in the last six and a half years actually has nothing to do with business. When you actually break it down, business is pretty simple. Make more money than you spend, grow, figure out what you want, make it happen, make sure your customers are happy. Um, for me, what I've realized is the biggest learning journey for me has been figuring out what I actually want out of it. You know, where my flaws are, what I actually need to figure out how to do better, who I am. Um, and this book was really, really insightful and just really getting clear about what I want and then how to create it and then how to be in integrity throughout the whole process. Uh, the book that I, I really called my, uh, my startup bible is a book called Four Steps to Be a Pygmy by Steve Blank. And really what it is, he teaches you all about what a lean startup is and the premise is that a startup is not a small business. It's a, he says it's a temporary organization put together uh, to try to find a business model. So when you think of it that way, it's actually much, much different. And you're realizing that you're just trying to figure out what you're doing and you're constantly learning. So when I read this, we, we had originally launched back in 2008 and you know I didn't read any of this. We'd raised money and uh, you know we were, we were trying to figure out what we were gonna do. Are we gonna go under? Are we gonna save this thing? And, and I started reading this in 2009 and realized that, okay, we really need to change the whole culture here and look at this thing differently. And, uh, it really kind of basically saved our company, so definitely that one. The next one is uh, The Lean Startup by Eric Reese, which is kind of the, uh, the next generation um, book. Um, I'll piggyback on Chris's actually. Definitely on, on the most important thing that's happened to me in terms of reading and how it's impacted <coughs> leadership and et cetera is figuring out what I want and what I'm good at and what I'm really bad at and how I can leverage those things in order to you know, figure out how to do business better. So that's a different book, I think, to every person in this room, for better or for worse. It involves a lot of internal thought, so self-help section, probably. Uh, uh, but to answer the question more directly, I think there's a spectrum of, of business books that are pretty valuable. There's like the, the business school side of things, Michael Porter, Clay Christensen, Judo Strategy is one of them, figuring out how these big companies and you can leverage yourself against their weaknesses and make a cool, disruptive startup. On the other side, you've got more like Ender's Game, which is like really important to me when I was when I was younger, which is like ultimately about you know I can actually do anything. The suspension of disbelief, I can control an entire army as it may be from a video game, which was um, a really powerful message at least for the gamers in the, out here. Um, and then right in the middle, you've got sort of like the tech crunch. You got the blogs, the interactive stuff that changes on a daily kind of basis that keeps you up to date gives you access to writers, gives you awareness of what's going on in your businesses today, and, and uh, taught me a lot about how to network with people that I have no relationships whatsoever. So a lot of like more life lessons through experience just working uh, working that involved. I end up reading a lot of nonfiction that's not business book related. Um, the book I've been plugged once, but Founders at Work, which is Jessica Livingston's book, even though she's out, it's, it really should be required reading. A bunch of very candid um, made to Stick is probably, that articulated really well a lot of things that I always kind of felt about marketing, uh, but they did a good job of it and brought in science apparently in some of their research. And uh, when it comes to making the world suck less, Half the Sky is a fabulous book about why helping women help themselves is what's going to make uh, things a lot better for so many of us. So for me it's more marketing books because our, our business is so much around like lead generation and whatnot. So, and this goes right into like startups choosing the right right industry and whatnot. There's a book called Breakthrough Advertising. It's out of print, but you, most libraries have it. You can get books, of, like you get copies of it on eBay. It's about $100. Uh, um, some of them go up to like 600 but it's worth every single penny. Basically, it helps you analyze 
which stage of a market it is in and what marketing tools you have in your arsenal to tackle that. Break your advertising is awesome, that's Eugene Swartz. And then um, Words That Work is more like a political book, but it's kind of like how to do branding right. And then um, there's one more. I'm blanking on it, it's another copywriting book. But uh, Joseph Sugarman is the author, and I'll, I'll let you know. Um, again, it's been, <laughs> been plugged already, but the e -myth, um, I like a lot. And because I've had my hands in a lot of different pots uh, in the last six years, um, dibbling and dabbling a bit like in wine and now fit and finance and always in marketing, um, I really probably read much more of um, current happenings in blogs and, you know, Big Reader Inc., um, Forbes, TechCrunch, VentureBeat, Mashable. Um, I find it to be the most effective way for me to keep up with everything that I, I need to know in kind of short form. Um, and oftentimes when people recommend a book, I'm like, okay, what part of that book do you really like? Because I don't have the time to read the whole thing. Audiobooks. Audible is awesome. Like, when I was in college, I had to commute a lot because I was building my business, and my clients were about two hours away from where I was in college. And I would listen to like an audiobook a week. And I definitely attribute a lot of my success to listening to all those audiobooks. I have, I have two more. Um, <laughs> you've actually books that I've read recently to try to solve the challenge of being an entrepreneur in a very big company. And when I think back on them, they're probably books I should have read when starting the company. Uh, neither of which I know the author, but you can use Google to find them. Right. Uh, Five Dysfunctions of a Team is a really good book to help a, an entrepreneurial team figure out how to solve challenges. And an interesting management book is It's Your Ship, which is written by a uh, general in the Navy. And it's all about um, finding people in the business to find specialties and delegating tasks, which as entrepreneurs, we, uh, we absolutely have to learn to do. All right, great. Thanks. Sorry the question was so long, but thank you. Thank you, everyone. Uh, hold on, let me pull.